from the newlywed. on their honeymoon morning because he had his watch on upside down and thought it was 12.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> Married just eight months, Tom and Valerie Scruggs. Couple number two, neither he nor their first dinner guests were aware that their hamburgers had landed on the kitchen floor before they landed on their plates. Married just 11 weeks ago, Mark and Kathy Kemmer. Couple number three, he called long distance to ask, will you marry me and move to Southern California? And she answered, how close is it to Disneyland? <laughs> Married just 14 weeks, Stan and Linda, Linda Traxler. Couple number four, he used to brag to all his friends that they had steak and potatoes every night, neglecting to mention that steak and potatoes were the only things she knew how to cook. Married just six weeks ago, Vince and Gloria Canelo. Well, if we surveyed today's couples, I bet we'd find that the one thing they'd most like to have would be matching answers. Now, we'll be back to find out which couple comes closest to that goal right after this message. All right, gentlemen, here we go with the newlywed game. As you know, your wives have been secluded off stage in a soundproof room and cannot hear your answers. I'm going to ask you some questions, and while each of you answer them, as you predict, your wife will. Now, if your prediction matches your wife's answer, you'll be awarded five points. Then the one couple with the most points at the end of the game will win a grand prize selected especially for that couple. So remember, gentlemen, answer these questions as you predict your wives will. Here's question number one for five points. Gentlemen, how will your wife say you would complete this sentence? When she was single, my wife's biggest difficulty on dates was what? And be specific, please. Vince? Oh, I would say uh, saying goodbye at the porch. I can't think of anything. Saying goodbye at the porch? She had difficulty saying goodbye at the porch? Yeah, well, we both had difficulty. I didn't want to come on too strong, and she didn't, well, it was difficult. All right, fine. Stan? I guess she would say, have a little trouble going out with anybody else but me. We My well, biggest about... difficulty on dates was going out with anyone but you. Yeah, we dated for about six years before we decided we'd like to get together. You don't want to rush into those things. No, I know. I never want to get too close to them. <laughs> I think her biggest difficulty was being home about one, 12 or 1 o'clock. Couldn't stay out really late. Because I know when I started dating her, I'd be home or else. So her biggest difficulty was? Being home on time. Being home on time. All right, Tom? I would say the same thing. She, uh, we had trouble getting home on time at first, and All my right. parents aggressively restricted the limits, so we had to get home earlier. Getting home on time. Next question, gentlemen. What household gadget will your wife say reminds you most of her figure? A household gadget that reminds you most of her figure, Stan? The electric can opener. <laughs> the electric can opener. Yeah, it had to be the electric can opener. Because she, I think she eats too much. She knows I think she eats too much. And she always uses the electric can opener to eat, get at the food. So she'll say the electric can opener. All right. Mark, what uh, household gadget will you watch that reminds you most of her figure? I'd say it's a lamp. <laughs> she has a figure like the lamp? No, we got this lamp. It's over in the corner on this table. And it's got this wobbly shape, you know. And it starts from the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all right. I've seen those lamps, yeah. Tom? I'd say a uh, coffee pot. It kind of, it's kind of slender at the top and just gets progressively bigger. <laughs> coffee pot. This? Oh, I'd say a, a vase. It's, it's an, a vase, homemade type vase. It's a nice. vase? A vase. Pardon me? A vase. <laughs> oh, a vase too? A vase. <laughs> okay. If it costs more than $5, it's a Voss, you see. Right. All right, here's the last of our five-point questions. Gentlemen, what will your wife say is the first name of your second favorite person to be with? The first name of your second favorite person to be with. Mark? Uh, I'd say Linda. Linda? Yeah, she's, uh, that's her best girlfriend, and we do a lot with this other couple. And, we can talk to each other pretty good. I have a lot in common. <laughs> Tom? Uh, I'd say Nadine. She's our neighbor. Nadine. Yeah. Vince? Ra. He's my best friend. Who? Ra. 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 Ra.
a guy that I went to school with back in Colorado. Mark, all right, gentlemen, thank you very much for your answers. We'll be right back. We're going to couples, and we'll see how well the husbands have predicted what their wives will say. Just Gentlemen, we recorded your predictions on cards, and I have them in your laps. Every time that your prediction matches your wife's answer, you'll be given five points. Then the one couple of the most points at the end of the show will win a grand prize selected especially for them. So here we go with question number one, girls, for five points. Girls, how did your husband complete this sentence? When she was single... My wife's biggest difficulty on dates was what? And be specific, please. Valerie, your biggest difficulty on dates was what? Probably trying to get the guy to leave me alone. They <laughs> <laughs> were usually alone. pretty aggressive. <laughs> oh. oh, all right. Tom said your biggest difficulty on dates was the top cut, please, Tom, was getting home on time. <laughs> you must have too much tough difficulty. <laughs> I made it. I made it home on time. Not with me. You Not didn't. with you. But <laughs> you know, we got other guys. I made it home on time all well, the time. Well, you should have talked about me. Well, I'm not saying I'll be with you. Kathy? Um, I'd have to say uh, getting ready for. Is this before? I mean, or during the date? You were single. <laughs> My wife. Oh. Difficulty on dates was what? Um. Make an impression. <laughs> Make an impression. All right. He said your biggest difficulty on dates was was of being home on time also. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest problem we had when we used to yeah. go out. I got to get home. I got to get home. <laughs> he never did get me home time. <laughs> well, still, I used to get the axe with you. Linda? That's tough. Our biggest problem. Your biggest mine, problem on dates. Oh, not with him. Particularly. The okay, question my, is. Yeah. Huh. Right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> the biggest problem would be having the guy find my house. Because I live way up in the mountains. Having the guy find your house. Yeah. All right. He said your biggest problem on dates was was uh, going out with anybody but him. You're always going out with me. You're always saying to me, you're saying, man, it sure be no, nice I to go out go. with somebody different. <laughs> she said that? We dated for so long. She told you that? <laughs> a lot of people thought we were brother and sister for a long time. <laughs> That's, that's, we'll keep it like that. <laughs> Gloria? Wow. It would probably be that trying to talk to the guy, making conversation. Making conversation mm -hmm. with the fellow. All right. He said your biggest problem was saying goodbye at the porch. What? what? Well, How do you know? You didn't go there with me. <laughs> I, no, I was there. No, he like, said I other can... people. Oh. Not with you. No, I, know I, I just said when you were single. Oh, with him? When no, I didn't say with him. I just said when you were single. Well, yeah. You weren't there. Were you? I used to go out with you. You didn't know him when you were single? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, you did? Yeah. Right. Next question for five points. Girls, what household gadget reminds your husband most of your figure? What household gadget, uh, Kathy, reminds Mark most of your figure? Oh. <laughs> Um, probably a rolling pin. A rolling pin. He said your figure reminds him most of, of the lamp. Oh, I like that green lamp, man. That describes your purpose almost. Oh, yeah, it does, not it? Linda? Probably the top part of the spoon or something. The top of the have. spoon. Stands, uh, it's the electric can opener. What? I don't know. I wasn't thinking too good on that one. <laughs> Well, I was thinking, you know, we've been talking square? about... Square? Well, not so much square that I just thought she'd say it. You know, you're always using it. Stuff. Gloria? Uh, I'd have to say a knife, because it's tall and thin. A knife. He said that it's a vase. I... Wow. Hey. Well, I wanted to, you know, kind of compliment you, you know, but... Uh, a vase? Uh, the one that Eddie made. You little... Yeah, you know that. Valerie? Well, it'd probably be a spoon helped upside down. A spoon, down. all right. He said that uh, your figure reminds him of the coffee pot. You know how you're always saying you're, you're small at the top and it gets bigger? Well, that's what I meant about a spoon, you know, down like that and then out at the bottom. Well, you could hold it the other way and it'd be big at the top and small at the bottom. <laughs> but a coffee pot is small at the top and big at the bottom, and that's what you are. <laughs> Thanks. Here's the last of our five boy questions. Girls, what is the first name? of your husband's second favorite person to be with. The first name of your husband's second favorite person to be with. Linda? Mm, Carol, his sister. Carol. He yeah. said that his second favorite person to be with is Mark. Oh, I, buddy Mark. Yeah, but that's your first favorite. <laughs> <laughs> He'd rather be with Mark than with me. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's not true. Yes, it is. I married her. I didn't marry Mark. Mark <laughs> I think that's good if you want to be on this show. <laughs> Gloria? The second favorite person to be with, uh huh? I'd have to say is best friend, Rob. Rob, all right. You think that would be? Doug, he's our next door neighbor, Doug. he's the manager. He said that his second favorite person to be with is uh, Nadine. Nadine? Well, that's right. Yeah, well, she's the only one Doug is. So I just figured Nadine. No, it would be Doug. Oh, Doug. 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 Doug.
or the tortoise and the hare? This is last evening. Mark? Um, I said a bird and a bee. Bird and a bee. All right. You're going to say a bird and a bee. <laughs> Last evening. There's the cat and the dog, the bird and the bee, and what was the other one? Tortoise and the hare. Hmm. I say the bird and the bee. The bird and the bee. She said you would say the bird and the bee. Yes? Uh, I would, last night, I would, I would say the birds and the bees. It's the bird, bird and, and the bee. bee. All right. She said it was. The tortoise and the hare. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. I thought it never. <laughs> yeah. Tom? Well, none of those seemed to typify last night, but uh, everything was really slow because we were really bushed. So I'll say tortoise and the hare. Tortoise and the hare. Robert Frick and you would say it was the tortoise and the hare. Keep one hand on those cards at all times for me, please. Thank you. Last of our 10-point questions. Gentlemen, tell me, what is the most coquettish thing you've ever done at home? The most coquettish thing you've ever done at home. Vince, what would it be? Um, one time I cooked sweet and sour pork. With, I don't know if that was coquettish. <laughs> you cooked sweet and sour pork? Well, I was sick. Because of his sweet and sour pork? No, I was sick, so he cooked himself. Oh, I see. She said the most coquettish thing you've ever done. You wander around. Can I see the carpet? <laughs> <laughs> After you start studying. Yeah, well, if that's coquettish, I do that too. You know. <laughs> right. Tom, what's the most coquettish thing you've ever done at home? I haven't got the slightest idea what coquettish is, but I pulled the tray out of the birdcage once. <laughs> I dropped water all over my legs. If that's coquettish, that's what I did. That's what you did, all right. She said that you splashed yourself with my little boy, right? Does your bird talk? Yeah, it's minor bird. Oh, I should have known. <laughs> what does it say? It says, uh, my name's Freddy. Uh, good night, Freddy. What's his name? Birds don't. Freddy. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. All right. Mark? Probably leave the house in a mess after I go to work in the morning. Leave the house in a mess, all right? She said the most coquettish thing you've ever done, you flex your muscles in the mirror. Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> now, now, what, what, does he, what does he do again? Like Very cool. Just around. <laughs> just I just goof around all the way from home. He likes to tease me. He knows it gets to me. It really bothers me. He does it every night and he comes home, but it really bothers me, so it's definitely me why he does it. If I just ignore it, he wouldn't do it anymore. <laughs> Dan, uh, what's the most coquettish thing that you've ever done at home? The coquettish thing I've ever done is, uh, I probably walk around the living room in my underwear. <laughs> is that right? Yep. I don't know what coquettish means, though. <laughs> it sounds coquettish to me. <laughs> it does. <laughs> she said the most coquettish thing you've ever done. You admire yourself in the mirror. I should have given In his underwear? No. <laughs> I should have right there. Coquettish, by the way, means cute and flirty. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with that. I'm glad I don't write these questions. We'll be back with our big 25 point bonus question to see which. Our gentleman here today is a big 25 point bonus question for 25 points. Gentlemen, do you or do you not own a bow tie? Do you or do you not own a bow tie? And let's go first a couple for Vince and Gloria with five. Twenty-five will give you thirty minutes. If you get it right, you'll be in first place. If you miss it, you go home in last place. I do not own a you bow tie. You don't own a bow tie. She says that he does not own a bow tie. Yay! All right, couple number two. Mark and Kathy, you have ten. Twenty-five will give you thirty-five. Mark, if you get it right, you'll be in the lead. I do not. You don't. All right, no. she says that. He does not. That's right. Hey. Couple number three, Stan and Linda with 10.25, we give you 35, get it right, you'll be tied for the lead. If you miss it, you go home in last place. Stan? I would say we do not. I do not own You do not. All right, she says that he does not. That's right. Yeah. You're tied for the lead. Couple number one, Tom and Valerie, you have 20, 25, we give you 45. Tom, if you get it right, you're going to win a grand prize selected especially for you and your wife if you miss it. Oh, last place. I don't have a bow tie. You don't. She says oh. that he does not. That's right. Special prize chosen just for you. A pair of speedy, sporty new, his and hers motors. <laughs> oh, yes, Valerie and Tom, you've won the hot one.
is the big, sturdy, speedy, easy-riding Honda CB100. Absolutely perfect for country outings or quick trips around town. You'll leave parking problems behind, and you'll make the kind of mileage you've only dreamed about. Great for speeder trail, perfect for couples on the go, and they're yours for today's lucky winners of the Newly Wack Game. Donna Zari, congratulations to you. I wonder if there's good to the top and do those things. But be sure to stay tuned for Jim Lang of the Dating Game. This is Bob Eubank saying thank you and goodbye for now.